to Nature Notes. My name is Katie and I am one of the practicum students here at Schmeekly. Today we're going to be talking about polypores, or better known as shelf fungus or fungi. There are many different types of polypores, several of which are found here in Schmeekly. But looking overall as at shelf fungi, um, we can easily pick them out by their distinct characteristics. If you look at the if you look at um, this example of sh the shelf fungus, you can see that it's easily recognizable by the shelf-like appearance of the, of the mushrooms. As they grow, they grow in this um, shelf-like appearance. There's a wide variety, um, like I mentioned before. Some of them get quite extravagant, and still they retain that shelf-like appearance, which helps us classify them as shelf fungus, or fungi. The other way that we can tell that this is a shelf fungi or a polypore is by looking at the bottom of a mushroom. We'll discuss this particular mushroom in a little bit, but this is a piece of a shelf fungus, the actual fruiting body. It would sit on the tree like this, and if you look underneath it, there are these tiny little pores that are just barely visible to the naked eye. You can take that and pass it around. It won't hurt you this particular species. Um, something that I'm going to talk about right away is a common theme with mushrooms. Don't pick anything or don't eat anything in particular unless you're absolutely sure what it is. Um, that keeps us safe and making sure that we're not eating poisonous plants. Most of our shelf fungi um, here, at Shme or here in Wisconsin are non-edibles. There are a few that are edible and some um, including um, chicken of the woods chicken of the woods, and hen of the woods, which are both edible plants. However, make sure that you know you're eating them, eating before you eat them. Um, there are other plants, um, or other fungi, such as turkey tail, that were once believed to have medicinal value, and that's actually still, be looking, still being looked into um, as to whether or not it is um, a potential to help with cancer. Um, that research is still being done, and currently the overall consensus is there is not um, any actual benefit. So most of these um, are non-edible. Some of them, the ones I had mentioned that are edible, it is the new growing part of the mushroom that you would scrape off and then cook in order to eat that. So on a mushroom this small, it would be not worth it. <laughs> there would be no point in harvesting that, so you would wait until you got a larger mushroom um, to harvest the new, newly um, the newly forming part of fruiting part of the fruiting body. Um, also, one thing to mention is that none of the um, none of the plants or mushrooms in Schmeekly are available um, to be collected, and so that's something that you would have to collect elsewhere. Um, so another way that we can distinguish shell fungi. Um, or another variation of shelf fungi that's something to look out for is whether or not they have a stem. So this particular shelf fungus does not have a stem. It would attach to the tree like so. Some shelf fungi, though, do have a stem that would attach them to the tree. However, they would still retain the shelf um, shape. There are also differences um, in the substance of the fungi. So this, um, if you guys still have these, if you want to pass these around, this particular fungus is not um, not woody. So woody would be a characteristic of a fungus where it would be very um, difficult to break or break apart. There is also a there is also a fleshy variety of shell fungus that are easily crushed. And then lastly, there is a leathery type of substance which is what I would classify this as, if you want to keep passing those around. You can feel that it's got a little bit more of a leathery feel to it, rather than a fleshy or woody. These um, shell fungus can come in all, all three of these variations as well. Um, the shell fungi are a rotting group, and so what they do is they live on trees and they slowly decompose the tree itself. There are two different types of rot that can be caused by the shell fungus. One is white rot and another is brown rot, which you can tell the difference if it's brown or if it's white. The brown rot um, can be caused by some, some varieties of the shell fungus 
and that is when they, the fungus actually decomposes the lignin, which is uh, a chemical that helps strengthen the tree. And the white fungus, um, or the white rot, is when the fungus uh, decomposes both the lignin and the cellulose in the tree, and the cellulose is often left behind, giving it that whitish color. Um, this rot will often be um, will often attack a set group of trees, and this can eventually kill the tree. And so sometimes this these fung fungi are not um, are not favored by foresters or people who are trying to grow um, trees commercially. Um, however, they do have a lot of benefits, including um, that some of them are edible, and another one is that they provide great habitat um, for squirrels and other animals that will be able to easily excavate the trees for nesting habitat. Um, lastly, some of the white rot can also help destroy toxic, chem toxic chemicals that we have left in our soil, such as PCBs. Um, one last thing I want to touch on is this particular mushroom, um, it, I believe it's a turkey tail. And so that's a very common mushroom that you will see across North America that lives on different trees that are easily defined by the rings. These mushrooms are a little bit out of season, and so they do not have as colorful rings as some of the, some of the larger turkey tails would. But you can still see the rings on the mushroom itself if you guys want to keep looking at these. And so the rings are an identifying feature of turkey tails, however, um, there are many look-alikes, and so once again, being sure of what you're picking and using different, a variety of different guides is always helpful when identifying mushrooms. And that wraps up our nature notes for this week. Thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful week. <laughs>